scripture says, And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Matthew 6, 28, 29. And we see the beauty of God's creation this time of year and things are beginning to grow and we're very blessed and we welcome you out today to our service. We're glad to be gathered together to worship the Lord this morning. We have uh, following the morning service a quarterly business meeting just happening after our service and so we would invite you to stay for that. We also in the kitchen in the fridge we have some... uh, uh, some cold uh, items for us to take from the uh, lobster dinners over the weekend. So there's some potato salad, coleslaw, and some dessert, and so each one is welcome. They have some portions set aside for the church today, and so visit the kitchen before we uh, leave today and uh, be able to get some of that and uh, enjoy some of that those goodies. We are uh, be in prayer for those that are in our prayer request section of our bulletin today. We're very thankful for your continued prayers and our concerns in our family in uh, Alberta right now. We're thankful that each one is uh, seeing some improvement and uh, keep each one in prayer. We thank you for that. And remember Norman as well in prayer as he recovers. He was in hospital and is at home now and recovering from illness. And be in prayer for others that are listed in the prayer request section of our bulletin. Be in prayer for Israel in the hour we're living. We know there's a lot of war that's happening there today. And so be in prayer for them. Uh, Be in prayer for missionaries that are serving in different parts of the world. We're thankful that the gospel is going forward and we pray for souls to be saved. We're seeing uh, unrest happen and it kind of helps us to be reminded that Jesus said these things will happen. But he also said he's coming again. He's going to call us home, and we're looking forward to the calling, the sound of the trumpet, and we'll be called home to be with the Lord. Uh, Wednesday we have uh, our online ministry scheduled, and we are going to be, Lord willing, beginning some uh, outdoor services later in the month, and so next Lord's Day we'll plan to be here for 10 o'clock Sunday school morning service at 11, and then we'll have a further update on the outdoor ministry. Uh, up in New Glasgow. All right. We're going to bow together for an opening word of prayer. I'll ask Charlie if you'd open our service in prayer this morning, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the freedom we have to meet together, the freedom we have to study your word and to claim it to the people we know around as our friends. And Lord, we, as we meet people, may we see them as souls that need to be saved. And if they are saved, let us rejoice in them. So, Lord, we pray that that will work in our hearts these days. We think of Jerusalem today, where we know the promise of Christ, that we have a promise in Christ. We have a promise that God says that uh, bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee when he called out Abraham. Lord, we know that there's a lot of the world that curses the Jewish people. There's a lot of the world that hates God. And, Lord, we pray that we'll be faithful in our prayers for Israel, praiseful, Prayerful when it comes to praying for the Jewish people that they'll see that Christ is the Messiah. The Messiah has already come. And Lord, we pray that they'll embrace the Messiah and be wonderfully saved. We know that the early church began with Jewish people and it spread there to the Gentiles, to the Apostle Paul. And Lord, we have a ministry to each and every person. And everyone can be saved. Whosoever will may come, and Lord, may we be faithful to that calling, and may we go out and be what we ought to be, and may we see souls saved. And Lord, we thank you for the opportunity we have to present the gospel today. We pray that some soul today that hears the word will be touched and turned to thee. We thank thee in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to take our song books, and we welcome each one in today. We're going to turn to number eight in our song books and sing our opening hymn, Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. And we're so thankful that we can worship God, the Lord, today, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's stand as we sing. Yeah. 
from the sepulchre, from, yeah, okay, we're good. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulchre, for they troubled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Now, when Jesus was risen early, the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went out and told them that had been with him, as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. After that he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked, and went into the country. And they went and told it unto the residue, neither believed they them. Afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and unbraided them for their unbelief and hardened hardness of heart, because they believed not when which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Thank you, Carl. At this time, we're going to give thanks for the offering that's been received today. We'll ask Jeff if you would return thanks for the offering, please. Heavenly Father, we give the Lord for this day and more than that. We want to ask you to bless the offering, Lord, and Father, that as we take uh, for your use, Lord, and Father, wherever it may be needed. I pray, Father, for missionaries around the world, Lord, and Father, that they would stand true to the word of God, Lord, and Father, that you would just, uh, if there be anybody that's being persecuted for their beliefs in Jesus Christ, Lord, that you would just comfort that person, Lord, and uh, watch over them. I pray, Father, for any soul here today that would not be uh, saved, and know you as Lord and personal Savior, Lord, that they will come to that truth today, Lord, before it's everlasting truth. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
morning we're going to turn to another hymn together. It's number 13 in our song books, number 13. The Bible says that his eyes were a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. And this is the hymn, crown him with many crowns, the lamb upon his throne. Let's stand together and we'll sing this. The Lord Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords today. to take your Bibles and turn with me, please, to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, and I'm going to begin reading in at verse number 18. Matthew chapter 4, verse number 18. Now, I've got to lock this because I might come right off the stage and meet you all on the floor. So, there we go. <laughs> and Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. 
And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on thence, he saw two other, saw other two brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse, diverse diseases and torments and those that were possessed with devils and those that were lunatic and those that had the palsy and he healed them. And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from Decapolis and from Jerusalem and from Judea and from beyond Jordan. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word this morning. And let's bow together in prayer. Father, we thank you today that we can gather in, Lord, on this Lord's Day morning. We thank you for each one that's come. We pray, Father, that you would bless each family, each home, each individual. Father, we pray that the Spirit of God would work in each one of our hearts. We know, Father, that you see each and every one of our needs personally. You know every heartache, you know every difficulty, and Father, you know our souls. And so we pray, Father, that you would work in us and through us. Father, we pray for souls to be saved, to find forgiveness of sins in the Lord Jesus. We pray for Christians to be challenged and to be encouraged. And Father, that we would desire to live for thee and serve thee. And Lord, we pray this morning that you would bless our meeting and our business meeting as well to follow, Lord. We thank you for this local church. We thank you, Father, for the word of God and for the freedom we have to have your word open. And Lord, we pray that you would be with those that aren't able to have those liberties in some countries today, in some places. And Father, we pray for the great turmoil that's happening right now in Israel. And as was prayed, we pray for the Jewish people, Lord. That they would turn to Jesus, their Messiah, and that they would believe upon him and be saved. And Lord, we thank you that you are with them. We pray, Lord, that you would be with us as we study from your word today. We just ask your blessing again in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> I remember as a boy in Sunday school, I received one of the little... New Testaments. I had a little brown New Testament, and one of the very first Bible verses that I highlighted, and it was either in green or blue, I can't remember, but it was a verse that's in Matthew chapter 4, and it says, verse 19, and he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And I can remember. There was a little song that we used to sing. I'm not going to sing it for you because I don't know all the words. I think it was pretty much, I will make you fishers of men, fishers of men. I know that part anyway. I knew the actions though. The actions were you take your fishing rod and it says, I will make you and you cast it out. And then you go, fishers of men, fishers of men, fishers of men. I will make you fishers of men if you follow me. I think it's something like that anyway. But I knew at this point when you say fishers of men, we would be in a row and we would be reeling. And part of the competition was to see who could reel the fastest to get their boat in, you know. And so we were as kids, we were just moving and getting the reel moving and trying to bring in some kind of fish. <laughs> and so I remember that when it came to this verse. But you know, wouldn't that be great if we had that kind of speed and urgency when it comes to the message that Jesus was bringing from this verse? I will make you, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Throwing out the gospel net that souls would come to Christ and that they would be saved and that we would have that kind of urgency in the day we're living. We know that the days are coming. Jesus said, I'm going to come again. 
We don't know when the hour or the day is going to be. He says that there's going to be things that are going to be happening on the earth prior to His coming. And we see these things happening on the earth today. And we see the great unrest and it causes us to look up, to be ready, to be watching. For Jesus is coming again. He's going to call us the church home to heaven to be with Himself, the bride of Christ. In this passage, the Lord Jesus is calling his disciples. He's calling them one by one to come and follow him. We have a Peter and Andrew, and, he, and they were fishers, it says in verse 18. I know a little bit about fishing, but not as much as they knew about fishing because they had boats and they had nets and they would go out into the Sea of Galilee and cast their nets out and they would fish. And Jesus said to them, follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. And straightway they left their nets and followed him. And Jesus called others. But Jesus was, they were going to find that Jesus was going to have a powerful ministry. It wasn't like a ministry like any other had had on the face of the earth. Jesus' ministry was one where he was going to be able to heal the sick. He was going to be able to preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. He was going to be able to raise those that had died back to life. And so the fame went throughout all Syria, all the areas, all the areas of Judea and Jordan and Galilee and all the areas around. People brought the sick individuals, those that were demon possessed and Jesus uh, healed them. Those that had all kinds of illnesses and Jesus healed them. And Jesus said to his disciples, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And I want to look this morning at a message Six reasons why we are to be fishers of men today. Six reasons why we are to be fishers of men. And I want to begin back in Isaiah chapter 53, a very familiar verse to us. Because each one of us, as if we know Jesus is our personal Savior, we are called to be fishers of men. We are to be involved in, in uh, seeing others come to know Him as personal Savior. Now, Isaiah 53 speaks of the Lord Jesus and that he would be taken and that he would die on the cross, that he would bear our griefs and carry our sorrows, and that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And notice verse number six. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. And we could say the first reason why we need to be fishers of men today. Is we need to be fishers of men because souls are lost. Because, because souls are lost. This is a verse that describes humanity as sheep. It describes us as sheep that have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. We're going our own directions away from the Lord. We're lost in sin. And Jesus bore our sin, it says, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Of us all. Our own way was the way of sin. That was all we knew. That was how, that's all we understood. Because we did not know the Lord before we came to him for salvation. And so this is one of those verses that remind us that we're just like sheep. It's very interesting as we read God's word. He says to the disciples, I will make you to become fishers of men. And then he, back in this passage, he says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We're likened onto animals in different ways and different pictures to be able to help us understand the message that the Lord Jesus has for us in the word of God. Mark's gospel, chapter 6. In verse number 32, and this is Jesus' response to souls that are lost. And, he, and they departed into a desert place by ship privately. And the people saw him departing, and many knew him, and ran a foot thither out of all the cities, and out went them, and came together unto him. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people, and was moved with compassion toward them, because 
they were as sheep not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. Jesus looked and he not only saw the faces, he not only saw their need, he was going to feed thousands of people in this passage, but he looked at them and he saw their soul. And he knew that they had a soul that needed him. They had a soul that was going to live forever. And what did he do? Not before he, he feeds them, he begins to teach them. He teaches them. And it was the same group of people that were had just he had just left on one side of the sea and he begins to pass over and, and they come around side, so they meet him again. And it says that he was moved with compassion toward them. I wonder if we have compassion toward those that are as sheep having no shepherd, that are as all we like sheep have gone astray, and there's so many that have gone astray. We were, we were, had gone astray. We did not know the Lord. There are so many that are lost. Do you know there's... A, we have helpers in the Maritimes for those that are lost. We have search and rescue. And I know I've toured a number of times the Air Force Base in Greenwood, Nova Scotia, and that is the, the base that used to be up in Summerside when the, when the uh, Armed Forces, when the base was open in Summerside. And they have uh, equipment there. They have a search and rescue squadron there. And that squadron, they could get a call at any time in the Maritimes to, to go up and to be able to uh, find someone that might be lost at sea uh, in particular. And they have... Uh, the means to send big airplanes up and what they do if it's in the night time they send out these great big flares and what the flares do is they just light up the whole area in the night and so then the, then they'll they'll swoop by send out the flares they'll come around again and they'll begin to examine and see if there's any signs of anyone there and they have other types of equipment like big helicopters sometimes you see the big yellow helicopter uh, yellow and red helicopter flying over and uh, that's a search and rescue helicopter and they, they can drop baskets down and be able to help people that become lost at sea, that become in great danger. And the Lord Jesus loves us, and He has compassion on us, and, and He loved us so much that He came down when, when we were lost and we were in great danger. And He went to the cross for us because He died for our sins so that we could have forgiveness. His blood was shed. And that brings us to the second reason why we are called to be fishers of men today, not only because souls are lost, but souls are also dying and leaving this world. It says in Ezekiel chapter 18, Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse number 18, or verse number 3 rather, Ezekiel 18 and verse 3. And he says this, As I live, saith the Lord God, ye shall not have occasion any more to use this proverb in Israel. Behold, all, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. And then over in verse 20 it says, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The Son shall not bear the iniquity of the Father, neither shall the Father bear the iniquity of the Son the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked shall turn from his sins, and, and he that committeth and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, and he shall not die. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him, and his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. And then it says in verse 30, Therefore will I judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent, turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live Ye. And what is the prophet saying to Israel? He's calling them to turn from sin. He's calling them to turn to the Lord. And that was the message in the days of Israel. And it's the message in today's day as well. There's a call to repent, to turn. Because judgment is coming. Turn 
Lest we die, it says, a soul that sinneth, it shall die. And what does the Bible tell us? One of those very familiar verses, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so we need to be uh, those that are casting out the line, sending out the net, reeling them in, because souls are not only lost, but they're dying. And it's as a result of our sin. We need to be prepared Because the Bible speaks of one or two places we can go to. And souls are leaving this life unprepared. And that's why the scriptures teach us to be sending out the gospel. We read the passage in our our morning reading that said, Jesus said, go out into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Because Jesus desires for everyone to come to him. And so many souls are leaving this life unprepared. Headed for destruction, headed for judgment, headed for hell. And so how can we be prepared to leave this life? How can we be prepared? Souls are lost, souls are dying, souls are entering eternity. How can we be prepared? First Peter chapter 4 and verse 18 tells us this. Chapter 3 and verse 18, he says this. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to, to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins. Boys and girls, I'll get your help this morning. How many times did Jesus go and die on the cross for us? Anybody know? One One time. And did Jesus go and die on the cross for us because he was a sinner? Or did he go and die on the cross for us because we were sinners? sinners. We were sinners. That's right. And so does Jesus give everybody the opportunity to believe on him to be saved? Yeah. Yeah. He gives us all the opportunity to believe upon him. It says for, and that's what this verse is teaching us, for Christ hath once suffered for sins. That speaks to the cross. The just for the unjust. It means that Jesus was perfect and we were sinners. He was the just one. We were the unjust one. And why did he do that for us? That he might bring us to God. Do you know Jesus wants everybody to be in heaven someday? He wants everybody to be able to have a relationship with his heavenly father. And it's it's all because of what he accomplished. And we have to believe upon him for salvation. To have our sins forgiven. It says, being put to death in the flesh, he died, but quickened by the Spirit. And we're thankful that he is risen from the dead. And he gives us eternal life today. And so we need to be fishers of men because souls are lost, yes. Because souls are dying, yes. Because souls are entering eternity unprepared. And so that's the gospel message that we have to, we have to warn. But why do we need to be fishers of men today? Because every soul is precious to the Savior. Every single individual is precious to Jesus. And you know, I was thinking of the passage over in Luke chapter 7. Jesus gave the account. Luke chapter 7. And we see the account of a woman that comes in to Jesus And she comes and she's very sorry for her sin. And notice what it says here in verse 36. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went on to the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him, weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who, what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say on. And he says, there was a certain creditor which had two debtors, the one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when he had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, 
Which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned and he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is thee, this that forgiveth sins? And he said unto the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee, go in peace. And this was a woman who had been enslaved in all kinds of immoral sin. She was well known in the community. And she comes to Jesus weeping and crying and broken. And I was listening to a message recently. The kinds of broken things God likes to see. And you know we don't like it when things are broken. We have a car or we have something that breaks. It's not a pleasant thing. But you know what God loves to see? He loves it when he sees hearts that are broken before him. Broken over our sin. Because then we come and then he, he can forgive us and we can enter into a relationship with him. As a Christian we can get things made right with him. The Lord loves to see a broken and a contrite heart before him. And this woman came broken before the Lord that day. And he forgave her of her sins. He called her to go from a place where she was broken and so troubled to a place of peace. He said, thy faith has saved thee, go in peace. And that is what the Lord does for us. He takes the brokenness. He loves to see us come broken, but then he binds us up. He forgives us and he gives us peace that no other can give us. We need to... Uh, be fishers of men today because every soul is precious to the Savior and there's not one sin that is greater than another sin. Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. The Apostle Paul said, uh, he said, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. But then there are multitudes that need to hear just as we remember that when the Lord Jesus after his resurrection, the disciples, they went fishing and they, they fished all night. They caught nothing. And the Lord Jesus, he told them to cast down the net. Does anybody remember what side of the boat they, Jesus told them to cast the net? The right? Yeah, the right side of the boat. And so Jesus is very specific with his instructions. And they cast the net on the right side of the boat. And it says that they couldn't take up the net for the fishes that were there. And does God have power over the fish of the sea? Absolutely. He has power over everything, over the fish of the sea. And so he caused a great school of fish to come into that net and fill it. And they had been fishing all night and caught nothing. You know, there are multitudes of fish. And there are multitudes of souls that need to hear about Jesus. You know, we have a job to be... We're, we're in one part of the world and other people are in another part of the world. And we all have a job to be a light for Jesus. Multitudes need to hear about the Lord Jesus. And multitudes can be saved because of Jesus and what he's accomplished for us. We need to be fishers of men, not only because souls are lost and dying and going into eternity, not only because every soul is precious to Jesus and because all the, the multitudes of the earth need to hear, but we need to be fishers of men because of what Revelation chapter 1 tells us. And we're going to end with this. This is the sixth reason. Revelation chapter 1. And I've been so thankful for all the help today from the boys and girls. And the message. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 4. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. 
It says in verse 7, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. Does anybody know, boys and girls, who is it speaking of? Behold, he cometh with clouds. Yeah, Jesus is coming again. It says, Behold, he's coming, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. You see in your Bibles, if you have one of the Bibles that have the red letters, that's speaking of Jesus. Those are the words that Jesus spoke. And Jesus says, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Jesus is God and Jesus is coming again. And that's another tremendous reason why we have to be going out and being fishers of men. Because Jesus said, I will come again. And the Bible says he came the first time as the Lamb of God. He came the first time to take away the sins of the world. He came the first time to lay down his life. But he's coming the second time. He'll call the church home. And then he's coming as the judge of all the earth. As the righteous judge. As King of kings and Lord of lords. And we need to be ready to meet him. Being ready means that our sins are forgiven. That we've asked Jesus to come into our hearts. We've invited him in. We've come broken before him because yes, we've sinned. Yes, we were lost and yes, we were dying. And we needed his forgiveness. And as a Christian now, we can go to the multitudes. We can go to the people that we are, are involved with in our lives. That God puts into our life. To be a light and a testimony. To be a fishers of men. And that as we sang that song as a little boy. And we cast out the line. I will make you. That we would have the same enthusiasm. Fishers of men. If you follow me. And that's the key as a Christian. That we would follow Jesus. Follow me. And I will make you to become fishers of men. Let's bow together. We thank you Lord for your word today. And we thank you for the challenge to our hearts. We pray, Father, today we would leave here with a desire to be fishers of men. Men and women, boys and girls. Lord, that souls would be saved. And Father, we pray, we know the days are growing short. But we thank you that we have a job to do here in this life until you call us home. Lord, we pray that you be with each boy and girl that's here today. We pray that some part of the message would sink into their heart today, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that you speak to us through your Holy Spirit and your word. And so we pray that you will continue to work this morning. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and we ask. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to sing a hymn before we have a brief business meeting at the end of our service. And so I'm going to invite you to take your songbooks and turn together to hymn number 100 or number 811. It's number 811. And uh, if there are any that are not staying for the business meeting, I'd invite you to go into the kitchen. And there is, in the, in the fridge, there are some leftover potato salad, coleslaw, some desserts that we're welcome to take a portion today. They have them uh, in individual containers. And so you're welcome to do that. And, um, and so we're thankful for the hall that they offered that to us today after their lobster dinner on the weekend. Let's stand as we sing this hymn in closing, 811. His name is certainly wonderful, and his name is Jesus, my Lord. I trust he's each one of our Lord today. He's our Lord and Savior. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Everything is 